Hello, my name is Alex with Apex Tutorials, and today we're going to be taking a deeper look at the project settings for a Jira project. Now, if you're new to this channel, you may have seen the last video series that I did, which was all about creating an account and setting up your first Jira project. Today, we're going to be focusing on configuring that Jira project for your specific team needs. Please make sure you're subscribed and make sure you drop a like and a comment if you have any questions. Any of the information that is important to this video is going to be in the description. And um, thank you for joining and let's get started. Okay, so if you haven't already, you should have a Jira project by now. This is a continuation from the last video series. Uh, we are going to be breaking up this series into a couple of different videos. Uh, just to kind of help you stay focused on what's important for the specific video topic. So this is right here a just fresh Jira project just created. It's a company managed project. I go over all the specific details of how we got this far in the other video series here. There's a link to that series. Uh, so make sure you go check that out if you don't already have a Jira project. But from here, we're going to assume you're already at a company managed Jira project and we're going to get started. So again, this is your landing page. This is kind of what you see the first time. I'm on the free version just for now. If you upgrade to standard or, or premium, that's entirely up to you. Um, at some point in these lectures or series of videos, I am going to have to upgrade to at least standard to kind of show you extra functionality. And then eventually I will be upgrading to premium to show you even more power and more functionality that you get. But those videos are coming down over the next few weeks. So if you haven't, again, subscribe. Lots of great videos coming your way, so smash that subscribe button, hit that like button as well, and uh, we're going to get started. So the first thing I like to tell my clients and, and people that I'm training Jira is to kind of dismiss this quick start. It's kind of annoying. Get that out of the way so you get the full screen view. Okay, now, again, we're not going to be talking about Jira as a project just yet. I, I am going to be leaving a, or creating a series of just navigation within Jira. So again, if you're not subscribed, if you haven't liked this video, please make sure you do that right now because I'm going to be dropping those videos of explaining this entire interface here, how to use it, best practices, agile topics, lots of great stuff coming your way. But today, today we're going to be focusing on the project settings. Now, I also have another series of videos. We're going to be talking about like advanced uh, Jira administration. That's not what this video is about. This video here is going to be strictly focused on project settings, okay? Um, these are gonna be things that if you're a project administrator, okay? Not, not a Jira site administrator, but if you are like the lead of a project or a team, right? This is, I'm gonna kind of be walking you through what you can do if you're a project administrator. Now, this is a little tricky to do because some of the settings in here are going to kind of cross over to like needing to be a Jira administrator because of the inherent nature that we selected a company managed project. And so for that reason and that reason only, I'm going to, I'm going to call out when you need to be either a site admin or a Jira admin, but I'm going to try to stay as focused as possible with just the project administrator actions and tasking that you can do. Okay. So let's jump into this here. So the first thing that you can do as a project administrator is you're going to be able to change some of the details. So let me walk you through what some of these things are and what they're used for and some, some common best practices that I've seen with the dozens and dozens of clients that I've coached and counseled over the last few years. So the first thing is obviously your name, right? So this is the project name. This name, depending on, on how picky you are, right, you can change this after the fact, right? After you've created the project, you get an opportunity to create, put, define the name upon project creation. But if you have a change of heart or maybe your team purpose has changed or whatever, right? Whatever your reason may be, this is where you're going to come in and change the name. This is totally fine. There's really not that big of a deal if you change the name, especially like right now that it's a brand new project where you do get into a little bit of trouble, however, is if you change the key. Now, it's not the end of the world. Jira will do what's called the re-index behind the scenes, and you're going. it's basically gonna go and update every ticket, right? But the things to consider, right, 
<clears throat> the more tick issues you have in a Jira project, the longer that reindex is going to take, right? And so you want to be mindful of that. But two, and, and really the reason that I discourage changing the key after creation is if an individual did a hard link, right? And, and this isn't always the case because I do believe Jira is smart enough to reroute itself, but it just it's an unnecessary headache, right? If somebody for some reason had a hard link or, or they're referencing it somewhere else and all of a sudden they're coming back, that key isn't going to exist. The, the key is in every URL for every issue. And if you change that, it may cause some trouble. So I would recommend that you stay away from updating the key. Again, Jira's kind of getting pretty smart with all this, right? It's, it's able to kind of fix itself so that you don't have so many headaches, but there's always that small, even if it's under maybe one or 2%, right? <clears throat> that you may have a problem. So I would just shy away and recommend you stay away from changing the key after the project's been created. But the option's there. A uh, URL, this is just a place for you to add a URL. There's, there's nothing specific. A lot of people think that this is your Confluence URL, but there's actually a, a Confluence section, which we'll discuss in a very in a future video, where that's where you would want to do your linkage to Confluence. But this is just a URL. Maybe you have a, a personal website or something that you want to provide. This is where you would put it. Now, next up is the project type. You can't change this. This is just kind of just telling you what it is you did. You basically need to create a new project if you wanted to change it. For the most part though, most technical teams and even non-technical teams for that matter, they're going to be using software, right? If you watch my last videos, we analyze the different project types that there are. And most teams, when they think agile and, they, and then they think Jira, right? They're gonna put the two and two together. You you want a software project type. So I don't, I don't see a lot of teams ever changing this. All right, so project category here is how you define or bucketize your different projects, okay? You need to have these predefined so you can select it. If you don't have a predefined, there's a little information icon here and you'll see a link. If you right click and maybe open up that, open that up in a new tab, it'll take you to where you can do that. Okay, no. so this is gonna be a site administrator level functionality. So you're not gonna be able to add or create categories if you're not a site admin. So if you run into that case, make sure you consult with your site Jira administrator so that they can create that project category for you. The project categories are valuable because they allow you to bucketize your projects. So in a small organization, it might not be a big problem because you have maybe five, six, seven different Jira projects. But when you're in a large organization with 100, maybe 150, 200 Jira projects, you want to be able to quickly sort them, right? Because in Jira, you can sort by the owner and you can sort by the project category. So it's pretty good. It's a good idea. It's a good practice to make sure you, you uh, fill out this category. All right. So next up is the avatar. This is just a very personal choice. You can upload your own avatar. So if you want to add a little, a little personality to your project, right? Maybe you have a team logo, company logo, something of that nature. The description is a, a very quick description of what the project's about. So put anything you want here. I don't, I typically don't put anything in it, but if somebody needs to know what the project's about, if, if you're all about over communicating, then I recommend you just fill it in here. Now, the last two things that I'll talk about are project lead and defaults assignee. The project lead is important from, from an internal perspective. It doesn't make too, like, it's not too important because like, if you're a team of, like, if you're a small team, right? If you're a really small company, your project leads probably not going to be mattered that much. Right. But if you are in a large organization <clears throat> or there's multiple Jira projects and multiple teams, multi, like just a lot of people, right? The project lead is very important. And let me tell you why one, there's a single point or single owner for the entire Jira project. And me as a Jira administrator, I find that very valuable because I can't tell you the number of times that I get requests of individuals requesting people to be added to a project, customization to, uh, to the workflow, to the issue types, to the fields, right? There's just a lot of requests that I usually get as a Jira administrator that directly impact the projects in Jira, right? And what I typically do as a, as a good Jira administrator that I am, I don't just go and fulfill their requests, right? I go and check what the project lead and, or I confirm that the request is coming from the project lead, right? Because a project lead is in my eyes, the owner 
of the project. So anybody that needs to get access, anybody that needs to modify anything that is going to have consequences, whether positive or negative, it should come through the owner of that project. And that's this is where you're going to define that. So again, if you're, I would urge you to go back and, and audit your project leads. If they're not the appropriate owner, I recommend you take the time to configure this and set this right because it will make a big difference if you're having a lot of problems with Jira where people are just willy-nilly just changing things and you have no control. I would put, set forth a process or a policy that says, hey, Jira admins, if the request didn't come or is approved by the project lead, please ignore it because that's how you basically get an out of control Jira. And then the last thing here is the default assigning. You can either sign it to the project lead or leave it unassigned. My recommendation, um, and let me see what Jira says here. Yep. My recommendation is to leave it unassigned. Um, if you saw this little bubble here, right, it's the default assigning when creating an issue. So whenever you hit the create button, whether it's through here or, or through another area, Jira is going to either A, as auto assign the issue to, to the lead or leave it unassigned. And what happens if you, if you assign it to the lead, what ends up happening is you start losing accountability and commitment in your team because everything goes to their project lead. Right. And so it's up to the project lead to reassign or really anybody else. But everything kind of gets lost in the abyss that would be the project leads queue or, or I guess work to do right backlog. So I would recommend you leave it unassigned so that it triggers an action for you to assign it. Right. Because when you do the assignment in Jira, that really triggers the accountability portion of this whole experience. Right. And so if you're not doing that, it, it becomes a little bit challenging. So. Anyways, that's pretty much it with respect to the details.